Welcome to your weekly UAS news update, and we have six stories for you this week. Stefanik's anti-China bill, we have the FA Reauthorization Act, flying over people just got a lot easier, this is a cool one. Philly YouTubers troubles don't end, we have a new payload from DJI, and then lastly, Axon to acquire d -Drum. Let's get to it. And yes, I know we have a lot of stories this week, but all of them seem to be pretty important, so I wanted to cover them all. And also, this happens to be our fifth anniversary of news updates, so you know what? Go big or go home. Let's get started with the DFR bill from New York Congresswoman Stefanik uh, that we discussed in the last few weeks. Now, it has finally been introduced to the House. Now, the bill aims to impose a new tax on the most popular drones in the country, aka DJI, and by 2030 would actually ban any drones manufactured in China. Now, it does this through parts restriction that are based on where the drone is assembled. Now, this will lead to higher cost for everyone and then also potential collapse of the consumer drone market. And then finally, a major effect on the use of drones for life-saving operations by first responders. Unfortunately, this bill is getting support in Congress. And of course, as we discussed before on this channel, this bill is nothing about security concerns as they claim it is. Now, the very same parts of the components that are manufactured in China that would be banned from import could actually still be utilized by U.S. manufacturers who simply would assemble the drones here in the U.S. Now, we also discovered last week that Joe Bartlett, who is the current director of federal policy at Skydio, is also the former national security advisor for Stefanik. Now, in Stefanik's press release, we also found out that newly appointed AUVSI president and CEO Michael Robbins expressed support for the bill by saying, AUVSI is grateful for Representative Stefanik's leadership on this issue and is proud to support the DFR Act. So now what? Well, it's time for action. If you disagree with this bill, make sure to visit the Drone Advocacy Alliance website and write to your congressman and congresswoman to politely please express your opinion. Now, if you're also a paid member of AUVSI, please politely, again, contact your chapter or AUVSI leadership directly to express your disagreement with their support of this bill. Second story this week, the 2024 FA Reauthorization Act has passed the House of Representatives and is heading to the president's desk for signature. It's been a long time coming. We've talked about this several times on this channel, but the document is over a thousand pages and contains a list of basically all the action items that the FA is mandated to uh, put in place over the next five years. Uh, we'll have to go more in depth uh, with an analysis of the act in a separate video. I'm still reading actually through all all the important stuff. Uh, I started by highlighting all the things that I was interested in, and it turns out, well, it's over a hundred different chapters. So uh, the last reauthorization act was in 2018 and typically uh, happens every five years. Third story and more information from the FAA, and actually this is really good news. Uh, as you may already know, getting approval to fly over people has been difficult at best. Now at the moment, you either need to have a categorized drone or apply for a waiver. And we found out yesterday that 97% of these OOP, Operation Over People waivers, uh, have been denied to date. But the fine folks at the FA are actually paying attention and they are changing a few things. Now, let's be clear here. You still need to have a waiver. But if your drone is more than 0.55 pounds, 250 grams, and 0.88 pounds or less, which is 399 grams, and you have prop guards, anti-collision light, remote ID, either using a module or internally, a visual observer, and of course, I'll say it again, if you have a waiver, you need to submit the waiver, then more than likely you will get approved to fly over people. What a relief, kind of a big deal. I know there's still the paperwork to do the waiver. Of course, you still need to follow all the different prompts for that waiver, so you'll have to apply yourself and spend some time. And yes, if you do the math, this actually applies to all the DJI Minis, the entire mini series from the one through the four, the Altel Nano, the Parrot Anafi and Anafi Thermal, the DJI Avada 2, not the Avada 1 because it's actually 410 grams, so slightly over. But if your drone is over that 399 grams, 0.88 uh, pounds, and it's less than 3.5 pounds, which is 1,587 grams, then you will need a waiver 
Also, the prop guards, the anti-collision light, the remote ID, the visual observer. And in addition to all of this, you also need an ASTM parachute system. But if you have this and you submit the waiver, more than likely, again, it's gonna get approved and you'll be able to fly over people. Now, this would actually apply to the Air and the Mavic series from DJI, the Light series from Autel and the Evo 2 series from Autel, the Parrot NFE AI, the Schedule 2 and the Schedule X2, and then even the Phantom 4 Pro uh, V2, the DJI FPV and the Avada 1. Now, anything larger than this, over 3.5 pounds, will require more uh, special consideration. Make sure here to understand that this is not a regulation change you still need to have a waiver, you still need to go through the waiver approval. It's not 100% guaranteed, but your chances of getting it is gonna be much higher. This means that you can't just go and start telling people, oh, we can fly over people now, 400 grams, whatever, whatever. You still need to have the paperwork, okay? Sustained flights over people also will be allowed under certain conditions that are gonna be attached to your waiver, but operations over moving vehicle is not included in any of this at the moment. So you still have to follow the regular rules using categorized drones, which unfortunately there is really a handful of, okay? Uh, this information was shared in a Drone Pro webinar this week, and more information will be posted on the FA Drones on website very soon. A big kudos to the folks at FA AFS 751 for their hard work on this. Uh, we truly appreciate it. Uh, I'll have a full video explanation in the coming week uh, when we have all the final details. I don't want to jump the gun, but yeah, this is basically uh, the data that we have right now. All right, let's get to story number four. Uh, Philly YouTuber Michael DiSuerso uh, is being held in civil contempt of court for violating a previous order to cease flying his drone in an unsafe manner. Uh, this is a follow-up to a proposed fine by the FA in 2020 that totaled $182,000 for multiple violations of the federal aviation regulations. I'm sure you've heard about that story if you've been following uh, anything on the internet. Now, he received a preliminary injunction on on February 24th, 2024, this year, uh, which stated that any further violations would result in contempt of court. Now, evidence of a failure to abide by the injunction was filed on April 24th with the contempt of court order uh, filed on April 25th. What this means is that it's likely now that he is going to have his drone uh, seized and uh, held by the Department of Justice. So uh, more trouble coming for him after he decided to continue flying. Uh, in what the, the state uh, is uh, deeming a, um, an unsafe manner. So we'll keep you updated if we hear more on this, uh, but this has been uh, a story that has changed quite a bit in the last couple of weeks. Next up, DJI released new payloads with the H30 and the H30T. These new all-weather payloads are compatible with the DJI Matrice 300 and Matrice 350. The H30 includes a 40 megapixel zoom camera that's capable of 34 optical zoom, uh, 34X, and then 400 hybrid zoom, and then an electronic dehazing infrared enhancement, near IR illumination, a laser range finder capable of measurement up to 1.85 miles, which is three kilometers. The H30T uh, includes everything from the H30, but also adds a 1280 by 1024 thermal imager, which is a big upgrade. I think this is one of the first time we see such a big sensor uh, on a thermal camera. Uh, multiple gain modes, a 32X digital zoom, and a hotspot detection up to 2912 degrees Fahrenheit uh, or uh, 1600 degrees Celsius. Now this sounds like quite the upgrade from the H20 and an H20. T. Uh, we'll let you know if we um, can get our hands on one of those and then let us know what you think in the comments. Next story, Axon is acquiring D-Drone. Now, D-Drone is a counter UAS company that specializes in hardware and software detection and mitigation of UAS. Axon hopes to use D-Drone for their existing law enforcement customers and for municipalities with drones as first responder program, DFR. Different DFR than we talked about earlier. Uh, at this stage, only the federal government is permitted to uh, take down a drone using jammers or kinetic weapons. So it's unlikely that we'll see D-Drone jammers in action, but we'll keep you posted.
And lastly, a quick Pilot Institute update. We have now done a drone update for five years. And I started this because uh, before, I think even Pilot Institute was a thing. I think the first video, I don't even have a PI shirt on. Uh, I wanted to keep my students updated on all the changes that have happened. And now we've done this for five years without a single missed Friday. So every single Friday, we have posted news update for the last five years, and uh, I don't see us stopping. We've now sent 38,000 free stickers, registered registration stickers. Uh, we were going to do 10,000 and then we never stopped. Uh, we've also trained over 334,000 students to date, including 99,000 remote pilots. Uh, we're getting close to 100,000, which should be coming in the next few weeks. And then we've issued 207,000 trust certificates. That's actually 30% of all the trust certificates in the country. Our new community is booming. We have 27,000 active users in the new community at uh, community.pilotinstitute.com. There's ton of great resources there. Uh, a lot of exclusive content is also on the way that you will find only in the community. Uh, we have also a lot more coming up in the next few weeks. We have two, dr two new drone courses, a new airplane course that is going to be launching soon. So be on the lookout. Uh, thanks again for all of you that are watching every week. I know our following is, is growing and growing and more, in, uh, more of you are putting comments and uh, we appreciate the, the following. Also, we'll see you on Monday for the live as we do every week and uh, you have a great weekend. It, we have si I sneeze. <laughs> Welcome to weekly UAS news update and we have six for six for you, six stories. I don't know how you're going to put that together, but Welcome to weekly UAS news update.